Hey guys, welcome back to a very exciting edition of Cannon Fodder. As mentioned last time, this week's editorial was focused entirely on answering questions from the Halo community. Hundreds were asked and only a few were answered, so let's dive right in. Apologies in advance if I sound stuffed up or sickly in any way, I kind of am. So, anyway. What is the location of humanity's primary shipyards post-2553 and the approximate size of its fleet around 2558? The orbital shipyards located on and around Mars remain the primary shipyards utilized by the UNSC. The UNSC continues to rebuild in the years following the war. Their exact fleet sizes remain classified. How many shield worlds were successfully constructed? While over a thousand shield installations were originally planned, encompassing a variety of different design approaches, the final number of completed and surviving installations has yet to be determined. According to the records accessible by its monitor, Enduring Bias, Shield 0673, also called the Refuge, was the last shield world to finish its construction, though given anecdotal evidence from other monitors and compartmentalization protocols instituted by the Forerunners, one cannot necessarily take that at face value. Now this one's very interesting to me. Note how Grimm mentions that the Refuge was the last complete shield world. Seems to me to indicate there could be a number of incomplete shield worlds out there. Still, I do have questions about the variety seen in shield worlds. For example, why is Trevelyan almost as big as Earth's orbit, while Requiem and Shield World 0459 are closer to the size of Earth, or smaller? Was Trevelyan unique? Questions for another time, I suppose. What is the name of the class which the UNSC Heart of Midlothian and UNSC Urukoi belong to? Both belong to the Halberd class of UNSC Destroyer. Other examples include Hillsborough class destroyers, such as the Hercules. Do any of Thel's elites participate alongside Spartans in war games for training? There are healthy military relationships stretching back to 2553. Classified records associated with the Anvil Initiative indicate a number of very select joint training engagements. We've seen that the war game simulator is capable of supporting the invasion game type, Halo Escalation Issue 1 for reference. Is this 343 further teasing at the game type's return? I certainly hope so. Also worthy of note is this Anvil Initiative, this being its first mentioning. Given the name and the context, it can be deduced that it is an initiative to strengthen relationships between the UNSC and Thel Vadim's Swords of Sanghelios. What is the canonical design of the Charn class frigate, the one featured in Halo 3 or Halo 4? Halo 3 shows the canonical Charn class, while Halo 4 introduced us to the striding class of UNSC frigates. So there you go, Halo 4's opening showing the Dawn as a striding class is simply artistic license. No nanomachines, I promise. Is the unknown Forerunner construct in the A3 2013 a War Sphinx? No. However, many fans have gazed into the eye of one variant of War Sphinx while investigating Halsey's laboratory on Ivanov Station in Halo 4. I personally always bet against the Forerunner bird being a War Sphinx, so it's good to see Grimm debunk that. Whatever it is, I almost guarantee it's something entirely new. Also, if you're curious about that War Sphinx eye, here it is again. It's located at the end of the first section of the level Composer in the same room where you kill the two hunters. Not long after Halo 4 released, fans data mined the game and discovered the object shown was called War Sphinx Eye in the game files, or something along those lines. Were the Let Golo on the Halo fragment in Halo Nightfall part of the Covenant or were they one of the species on the ring? The Let Golo in question are the Thano Let Golo variation and were resident specimens on Installation 04. Do you know that a thousand other plans were tried and failed? So this one is actually pretty awesome. To start, we finally get a colony type for the Legolo seen in Halo Nightfall. Or rather, something like them anyhow. Of course, what's more interesting is the fact that they're actually residents of the installation. It begs the question, is that a common thing among the Halo rings? Did the Forerunners utilize Legolo in a manner similar to how the Covenant do? Or were these Legolo part of something else? Grimm gives us a very famous quote from the Halo 3 ARG Iris, noting that the Halos were only used after a thousand other plans were tried and failed. What role could the Let Golo have played? Noted in Halo Bloodlines is the fact that the Let Golo are immune to flood infection because of how simple their nervous systems are. Of course, when a flood infection is big enough, they can still be used as raw biomass. Nevertheless, this does mean that the Let Golo could be, in some way, useful against the flood. A friend on Halo Waypoint Xbox Live, and a guy who subscribes here, Mr. Jameson Locke, you know who you are, posted on Halo Waypoint that, Given the Thano let Golo's tendency to eat flesh and pseudo-immunity, they could be used to literally eat away the flood infection. An interesting idea, I must say, and I think he may be onto something with that. Next up is this question by some asshole. 
who were Spartan teams Gauntlet, Red, and Echo mentioned in Halo Reach. Spartan 3 teams like Noble? These Spartan teams were indeed specialized S3 squads much like Noble, their constituent members permissioned off from their original companies in much the same way. So that's confirmed. Thanks for the answer, Grim. What class of ship are currently being used with Julem Dama's Covenant? While Julem Dama's Covenant faction has made use of whatever vessels are most easily obtainable, his primary contingent consists of two assault carriers, the Song of Retribution and Breath of Annihilation, multiple CCS class battle cruisers, RCS class armored cruisers, and several SDV heavy corvettes. This does not take into account other vessels which have augmented his fleet on different occasions. What ship class was the Ascendant Justice? The Ascendant Justice was a DDS class carrier, Halo Visual Guide, page 28. The confusion arises from the designation of supercarrier in the adjunct text of Halo the Flood, 2010, page 367. However, this wasn't inaccurate from the perspective of the writer, as the DDS, CAS, and CSO carriers are a breed apart from the as yet unrevealed range of lighter carrier vessels that have support functions using small craft, e.g. the lawgiver from Halo Ghosts of Onyx. Nevertheless, it is confusing and we are currently in talks with Sangheili semantic linguists to see if such confusing nomenclature can be rectified in future broadcast logs. What is the name of Spartan Locke's armor variant? Spartan Locke is currently equipped with the Mjolnir Gen 2 Hunter variant. Are there other sentient life forms other than human and covenant species? Yes! Yes! Were there any active headhunters at the end of the Human Covenant War? The Headhunter Special Operations Program is still active, though it has undergone various changes and adjustments to its structure. Spartan Branch and Oni retain a very select list of Spartan 3 and Spartan 4 operatives who, when the need arises, can be employed in either two-person, binary, or single operative, lone wolf, teams. The details of their mission always remain classified. So this puts a very interesting spin on Noble 6, at least in my opinion. It can be inferred that Six was a part of the Headhunter program as a lone wolf operator. This also gives new meaning to Carter's line, That lone wolf stuff stays behind. Clear? Basically, it can be inferred that the line has a double meaning, Carter telling Noble Six to leave behind not only his habits as a lone operator, but also his habits as a lone wolf headhunter. And now for my favorite question. Most Covenant vessels in Halo have a certain naming convention with three letters. CCS class battle cruiser, CAS class assault carrier, DDS class carrier, CSO class supercarrier, ORS class heavy cruiser, RCS class armored cruiser, CPV class heavy destroyer, RPV class light destroyer, DAV class light corvette, STV class heavy corvette, CAR class frigate, CRS class light cruiser, etc. We know that their class names are a product of human designation of Covenant ship classes, but what are some of the Covenant names for these ship classes? The three-letter code for Covenant vessels are transliterations from the primary, secondary, and tertiary classification codes used by the alien fleet itself. Though these are somewhat analogous to the whole classification codes used by the UNSC Navy, e.g. C denotes carrier, DD indicating that the vessel is a destroyer, etc., the Covenant fleet has a different tradition of ship designation and naming than the UNSC, due to the particularities of their history, language, role in the Empire, and individual missions. Of considerable consternation to naval intelligence is that the alien empire was able to eschew rigid standardization and mass production due to highly advanced manufacturing methods enabled by fabrication plants such as the assembly forges. In fact, every Covenant vessel is a bespoke, coach-built example within a broader design pattern, often tweaked by individual shipwrights or the demands of the fleet masters who request them. For a working example, let's consider the Incorruptible, a reverence-class Covenant cruiser noted in Halo Goat Savonics, page 191, Halo Encyclopedia, page 287, and not to be confused with the Destroyer Reverence, Halo Encyclopedia, page 284. Thorough fans have historically, and correctly, inferred that another Covenant vessel from Halo Ghosts of Onyx, the Bloodied Spirit, is a CPV Destroyer based on page 223 of Ghosts of Onyx, and confirmed in the Halo Encyclopedia, page 282. For the Incorruptible, however, it was more difficult to make the necessary connections, though we can confirm today that the Incorruptible was an ORS class heavy cruiser. To help alleviate any confusion, let's take a closer look at the ship naming conventions as held by the Covenant. 
Regarding the incorruptible, reverence refers to vessels who can conduct missions related to reconnaissance and possible excavation of Forerunner artifacts. The known classes that fall within category for primary or secondary mission and size class is specific enough that we can narrow it down to either the ORS Heavy Cruiser or RCS Armored Cruiser. Of note here is that the Ordained denotes the vessel containing a Forerunner augmentation, a weapon core in this case, and is not a mission type. The Tertiary Code of Salvation denotes that this is a dedicated warship, capable of cleansing the enemies of the Covenant with holy fire. Keep in mind that there isn't a single specific ship type that the Covenant refer to as the Reverence class in all cases. There are multiple vessels ranging in size from kilometer long behemoths to scout ships less than 100 meters in length that share the Reverence classification code. Woo, that's a lot of information. There's not much more for me to really break down, but I would encourage you to read it yourself. This took me a couple goes to really absorb everything that's being said. Final question. Did any MOA survive the invasion of Reach? Though their native numbers were certainly decimated to near extinction levels by the catastrophic environmental effects of the Covenant assault on their natural habitat, it is held that there are still MOA populations thriving in remote sectors on the post-glassed Reach. Interestingly enough, the largest single population of MOA still alive are currently thriving on Gannic 22, an inner colony named for the original 22 scientists and pioneers of the UNSC Gannic that gave their lives in the discovery and exploration of a once hostile environment. Gannic 22 has become a larger population center since escaping the Covenant War unscathed and is home to Will Jax Brantley, entrepreneur and humble owner of his restaurant in Petting Zoo, Half Samoa. When the attack on Reach took place, the latest population of MOA that he had just recently received instantly became worth more than their weight in titanium, turning Brantley into a very rich man practically overnight. In related news, MOA nuggets, once a staple in the Have Some MOA Colony Kids meal, have now become an incredibly expensive delicacy among the wealthy UEG dignitaries. So what I'm getting here is that this place, Have Some MOA, along with being a place for visitors to interact with MOA, also served MOA-based food for that same clientele at one point at least. That's like going to see the bison in Minnesota and then getting a bison burger that afternoon. Which I've done. Bison's good. Still kinda messed up though. Also that planet mentioned, Gannic 22, first mentioned in Halo Nightfall. Question is, why Cedra? Why use this on an outer colony? Why not hit population centers like Gannic 22? So that pretty much wraps up the Q&A stuff. Next up are this week's new articles, which by the way were voted on by the community. So keep your eye on Halo Waypoint and you may help decide which articles are published each week. This week we have Threshold, the CAS class Assault Carrier, Song of Retribution, the M850 Main Battle Tank or Grizzly, and the Holy City of High Charity. A lot of the information is stuff we know, but there's still some interesting things that stuck out to me. Main among this was the stuff from the Threshold entry. First, it's noted that two of Threshold's moons are either home to Forerunner installations or entirely artificial, and that these installations are used in the maintenance of Alpha Halo. This got me thinking back to Halo Escalation Issue 10. At the conclusion, 859 Static Carillion takes Installation 03, Gamma Halo, to an unknown location to make repairs. At the time, it was thought that the Ark was the only place where Halos could be repaired, but it seems that may not be the case. Now sure, maintenance can mean something very different from repair, but I can't help but wonder if Installation 03 was brought to the location of another Halo for repairs. This also got me thinking about the description for the Halo 5 Forge maps Pegasus and Orion. Both note that structures popped up overnight on Installation 05. Could it be that there are nearby maintenance installations that are causing this? The second thing that stood out was the mention of an exclusion zone maintained around the debris field of Installation 04, which was sort of mentioned in Halo Nightfall. It would be a major peace violation if anyone went there. Treaty says no one goes back to the ring, not UNSC, not Covenant. Anyway, the description notes the ever-present danger of the Flood, indicating that the Flood are still present on and around the remains of Alpha Halo. It's always been somewhat assumed, but it's still nice to hear it. And that's pretty much it. As I said, a lot of this week's articles are pretty much repeat information. Of course, if you haven't read every little bit of media put out by Bungie and 343 over the years, they are still worth reading. Hell, even if you have, I'd still recommend reading them. Maybe you missed something. It happens to me all the time. Anyway, that's all for this episode. Links to the actual blog post are in the description below, so please, please check it out. For now, this has been Halo Canon, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. It means more than I can express in a few minutes of audio. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it around on whatever social media you see fit and all that jazz. Thank you so much. Your support is everything. I would not be where I am without you.
Thanks.